So you wanna get your foundation license here in Australia, amateur radio foundation license. Well, guess what? You've come to the right place. Today, we're gonna to talk through all of the steps that you need to do to successfully pass your amateur radio exam and uh, get into ham radio. The first thing we're gonna start off with, which is probably the most essential thing is the entry level to amateur radio is the foundation license. Correct. Yep. So that is the entry level. Uh, you get access to a certain amount of bands, um, a certain amount of power, yep. and then from then on you can upgrade to higher um, license levels. But we'll talk about the entry level for today. And this is probably the first place to start. Well and truly. This is the foundation license manual, your uh, entry into amateur radio. Now this is available from the Wireless Institute of Australia, the yep. WIA. Now, everything that we talk about in this video, there'll be links below in the description, so check those out if you want to, um, to uh, utilize those. So the, basically what this is, this publication has all of the basics related to um, electronics, electricity, radio, antennas and transmission lines, everything that you need to know about the basics of amateur radio safety, um, and to basically get you on the air. If, if, if nothing else, if you got this, this will get you through well the process. Yes. So um, this is the first step. Again, you can get this from the Wireless Institute of Australia's uh, website. Okay. Um, some radio clubs may also have this in stock. So if there's a radio club near you, then you might be able to get one from them as well. Fantastic. And we'll tell you later on how you can find them out. Cool. So yeah, step one. Uh, well and truly. And the next step is the foundation license training test which is available on the WI website. We'll put a link in the, the video description. Um, you can go through and it, it randomizes the test each time. You're looking at getting 70% or better. That's the pass mark uh, for the foundation license test. Um, but so it, how many questions are on the actual test? 25. 25, so you've got to get 70% of yep. 25. And you've pass. got 30 minutes to do it in, in a, in a exam setting. <laughs> so many, many people don't do it, do it much quicker than that. But 25 of those questions, um, and if you get 70% right, you're actually in a pretty good position to, to sit the actual exam. And a lot of people say to me too, they wonder about how difficult it is. If they go to the WIA website, again, below and do that test practice exam, yep. then they'll get a little bit of a feel about what sort of questions they can expect to see on the exam, and then you'll get graded and you can tell you know how, how much you need to study up on certain areas as well. So the other thing that we've also got is our radio club here in Hobart, the Radio Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania, REAST. We have some training videos which yep. you yourself have conducted. And yep. they are freely available on YouTube, so um, they'll be listed below too. So you can go through those a step at a time at your own pace, yep. and um, and they sort of complement what you learn well in the manual. Have a look at those with the manual in, in front of you. That, that's probably a good way of doing it. Once you've done your study and you've done some tests uh, and you're getting you know more than 70% and you're, you're happy with that and you want to look to book in your exam, then the best place to go to would be the OCMA Amateur Radio page. So, and there, again, there'll be a link there. There is a link to the assessors uh, page and I would search for your assessors in your area uh, to try and identify and there's contact details for those assessors as well. So uh, that's, the, that's the place to go and you can then have a conversation with that particular assessor uh, about um, organizing a, an assessment. They hold, like we do in our club, we hold regular sessions. Yep. So we'll have two, three, four applicants running. Uh, there are some uh, situations where you can also have some remote assessments. Correct. Not all assessments can be remote, but there are some special situations where that can happen. Well and truly. So, um, so the best thing is to reach out to uh, the assessor in your area and just ask them about that. Yeah. Um, now, if, if you are struggling with the assessors, the other place that you can go to which we also recommend to make sort of contact with so that you can get a little bit more assistance with amateur radio and learning sort of the basics and and uh, and and sort of finding a way through it is uh, finding a, a club so an amateur radio club in your area so uh, the best place to do that is on the wireless institute of australia's website there's a yep. list of affiliated clubs and you can search by state and area and that will have contact details information about the club where it is when yep. they meet yep all that sort of info. And, and most of those clubs have their own assessors as well. So they can point you in the in the direction of an assessor. Once you've got that booked in and you get to exam day, what can you expect on exam day? 
Okay, on exam day, um, the clubs do this a little bit differently, but most clubs will go through a bit of revision of um, your entry into amateur radio. So mm -hmm. they'll spend a little bit of time just, uh, and it gives it gives candidates the ability to ask questions and clarify things and, and before they, they head into the exam. Then they'll, they'll do the exam. There are a couple of exams that they'll do. The very first one um, is the theory exam, and, th and these can be done in any order. But the theory exam, so that's 25 questions uh, in 30 minutes. Uh, and then there is the practical uh, assessment. And we go through things like making contacts, um, IRLP, uh, a bit of phonetics, a bit of uh, identifying antennas and identifying connectors and all sorts of things. Um, and so we, we take you through uh, the practical. The practical, it's, it's a competency assessment. So you just need to convince the, the assessor that you're actually, you understand what's going on and you're, you're competent in, in doing that particular thing. So can I just say, I, I, I don't think in our club anyone's failed the practical. Uh, the, the, so, so yeah, don't be, don't be too worried about it. Um, and the assessor's there to help you as well. Oh, well and, and, to, and to guide well you and through all of that too. So yep. um, there's, uh, there's not much to, to worry about with the practical. It's actually, mm. it's actually a unique aspect uh, in Australia. I think we're the only ones that have a practical component uh, on it. Many, many, many or, uh, countries have actually removed it. And, mm. and one of the problems with that is you, you, you're wonderful, you get your license, you go through all of that, and then you get to the point where you have to operate and a lot of people go, ooh, what do I do now? Yeah, <laughs> whereas here you've already had that sort of practical. No, no. Correct. Uh, yeah. And you've actually made some contacts as part of that practical. Um, so, one and one of the other key things is once you've done those assessments, you are you are told whether you have actually passed or not on the day mm -hmm. at, at that moment. Um, so that's a, that's really re really satisfying to uh, to hear that on the day. So um, just quickly too, there's no Morse code. Morse code no. is is no more. No you more. don't have to do Morse code. I know that that's a, a common question that I get. Um, so you touched on you get to know on the day if you've passed or not. Now there are some been some recent changes only in the last month is from about February 2024. There are mm -hmm. zero exam fees. You do not pay to pass an Correct. exam. Uh, uh, sorry, you do not pay to take an exam, I should say. You only pay if you pass. Uh, that's a nice little slogan. You pay if you pass. Um, now the uh, fees associated are a uh, recognition certificate, which is your formal um, Letter that says that you're, <laughs> you're licensed to operate. And for those who, for the first time, they'll also need to pay for a call sign. Yep. And it roughly works out to be, I think, minimum is about $40, $45, I correct. think, for the certificate. Correct, correct. And about $25, $30 for the call sign. I can't remember, but I'll flash up on the screen the exact fees yep. and, and what they are. And, and the link will be below. And then once that's in, you don't have to pay ever again. There's no more license fees. Correct. You, you're set, so you don't need to, to worry about you have those. A call either. sign for life. Yes, a call <laughs> sign for life. If you do fail your exam, then there is at present a three month wait before you can retake that exam. So yeah. that's just something to keep in mind that it is best to do those practice exams and get above 70%. Um, you don't sort of want to wing it and then you have to wait another three months. Ah, uh, correct. So yeah, and, and we just encourage people to become involved. Um, if, if you find a, a, one of those affiliated clubs um, online and you start uh, to make contact with them, um, they have usually have a whole range of activities that you can get involved with. And so if you really want to throw yourself into amateur radio, make contact with the club and, and get involved. So. Yeah. Yep. Um, now, if you have any questions or anything that you need to know, then leave a comment below on this video. Reach out to your affiliated clubs um, and uh, they should also be able to help you out and use some of the resources and the links that we put in this video to help you get your way into your entry into amateur radio. And uh, we would love to see you in the hobby. Let us know if this was helpful and if you have passed, let us know your call sign and, uh, and how you went below yeah. that'd be good to and look to forward hear. to making contact with you it would, it would be great <laughs> now some of you might wonder well what's amateur radio good for what am i going to do with it well i've done some cool videos on some of the things that we do in our club and they'll appear over justin's head right now so click on those videos and uh and, and check them out <laughs>